I'm sure you guys remember little Greta Thunberg. Remember she made waves around the world when she sailed across the ocean and basically yelled at us because she thinks that our inaction on climate change will inevitably lead to her generation's death in 12 years. Kind of a ghastly message. And I feel a little bad for her because the poor girl is obviously terrified, but she's terrifying a lot of other people out there too which is irresponsible, and our guest today says it's not really productive to make this issue so unnecessarily scary. Naomi Seipt, who will be speaking at CPAC this week, is here with me now. Naomi, pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for having me on your show. So you are from Germany. Yes, I am. Did you, uh, how'd you get here? Did you sail across the ocean? Oh yes, absolutely. I sailed on a plane, actually. I sailed on a plane. <laughs> so not a, an environmentally friendly yacht. Yes. Uh, and yet, you're here, you're speaking at CPAC, and a lot of people are calling you the anti-Greta. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, uh, the comparison is obvious because I am a young girl myself and I talk about climate change, but I talk about the climate realist side of things, uh, which is kind of the opposite of what um, Greta Thunberg is talking about. So um, I and uh, other climate realists do not actually believe that CO2 emissions, uh, specifically man-made CO2 emissions, are having such a detrimental impact on the climate or nature or the earth in general. And we we don't think that we are uh, destroying this planet by using energy sensibly. That puts you in a huge minority, especially where you come from in Germany, and you're from a small town in Germany, mm -hmm. Germany correct? And you said it was heavily Green Party there. Yeah. So obviously you're in the minority in terms of your belief on climate. Everyone there thinks it needs to be a catastrophe. We need to handle it now. Otherwise, you're not even going to be alive in 12 years. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, we have Fridays for Future protests going on every single week. And I mean, that's fine if uh, young people actually um, go out and protest for something that they truly believe in and that, and that they can stand behind. That's awesome. But I believe that most of them don't know what they're really talking about. Whenever I approach them and I ask them about the science behind what they have to say, they don't really know anything about the science. Usually the answer that I get is, but 97% of scientists agree that climate change is real. And yes, I agree with that. Climate change is real. The climate has always been changing for millions and billions of years. But that is not the question that we need to ask. We need to be more precise when we ask those questions that are um, very important to our scientific view on the world. Uh, we need to actually ask, um, what what effect do man-made CO2 emissions actually have on the climate? And what the IPCC has to say about that is just based on climate models. And that's not true science, not to me. So you say that the climate science is not actually real, that the scientists who are, you know, the climate catastrophists are somewhat phony. And I think we actually have a clip of you talking about that quickly in a video that was put out on YouTube by the Heartland Institute. So let's watch that. It is important that we keep questioning the narrative that is out there instead of promoting it. And these days, uh, climate change um, science really isn't a science at all. So let me ask you this, because in that video, that last slide that you saw, it does say Greta versus Naomi, right? So you could see why people kind of are making this comparison. And yet I've seen another video of you where you say you don't necessarily like this comparison uh, and calling you the anti-Greta because, um, because it makes you out to be some sort of bad guy or something. Mm. Is that accurate? Yeah, like I said, I do understand the comparison. And I think it's fine if people find out about me and my views um, because they stumble upon the term anti-Greta. Uh, but I am not anti-Greta because I am, first of all, I am not anti this young girl herself. She is a probably a very nice girl, a young individual. And um, it's wrong to just see her as this climate symbol. Um, she's way more than that. And most importantly, she is not a scientist, neither am I, but I've done my research on these topics and I don't want to impose my views on anyone. I don't want to force anyone to, um, to, to change their mind radically. I don't want anyone to follow me unconditionally. I want people to start thinking for themselves again and be scientific skeptics. And so um, what Greta is doing is she's just spreading panic and she's not um, on the other side of the science because to me, there really, there is no science behind her. The big criticism of her is that she's 16, maybe she's 17 now, but mm -hmm. when she was getting all the media and the publicity, she was 16. 
And the criticism was that she is a child being exploited. I've seen articles that compare you to her in the sense that they are saying, well, the right is just taking Naomi and they're making her and they're exploiting her and they're making her a symbol for their own message. Do you feel that you are being exploited by, uh, you know, bigger powers on the right? Uh, I understand that too. And if I wasn't myself and I saw uh, this Naomi on TV, I, I might even think that myself. Absolutely. And it's kind of frustrating to read those articles because I know that um, I've done my research on all of this and I've been so passionate about these topics, about climate change, about the science behind it for so many years. And um, really, this is all just coming from me. I'm just trying to speak my mind and to... Um, to be maybe some kind of uh, symbol of hope for uh, young people who, who, whose hope is being taken away by people like Greta. I should tell the audience that Naomi is 19, so there is a big difference. I know it's only a few years, but it's an important few years. And legally speaking, one is a child and you are an adult. You are a legal adult at 19 years old. And so there is a big difference between someone who's not legally uh, able to go out and, and, and I mean, she can do what she wants, but she can still be exploited as a child, whereas a 19 year old by law has free agency and can do what she and what you want to do, Naomi. So I think that that's an important distinction to make to those people out there who are saying that uh, that CPAC or the Heartland Institute or whatever is just taking another child and putting them in front of the camera. You made the decision to do this, and if you didn't want to do it, you wouldn't have done it. Exactly, yes. I. Uh, my first principle is basically always speak the truth. And um, many people tell me, you are very brave for what you're doing. And yeah, it does take courage to speak the truth, but I am way more terrified of lying or being silent. So another thing that we were talking about a little bit before we went on air is the fact that you kind of started getting politically involved in Germany when you were just kind of researching the issue of unlimited migration into your country. We're dealing with something similar here in the U.S. And that really struck you and that really resonated with you. And you very quickly found out that you were being called names and you're being called anti-Semitic and you're being called a Nazi. Mm -hmm. um, why is that? Because you have a view that does not align with the uh, preponderance of views in, in at least your town in Germany? Uh, yes, exactly. And um, that is very sad because I don't have anything. I, I, I don't hate migrants or anything. That is not what this is about. It's just about the political uh, philosophy behind all of this. It's about uh, sensible migration versus uncontrolled migration. And uh, so we need to start, like I said, it's the same with the climate change issue. We need to be more precise with our questions about these policies and then um, develop more um, sensible solutions to them. And so it's, I mean, unlimited migration is the only other alternative to people who are proposing, yes, we should have borders. I mean, borders have separate separated countries for, for, for since the beginning of time, since literally the ancient times. And all of a sudden, it's this radical idea that we have borders. Mm -hmm. And they call you a Nazi, which in Germany even holds more weight than it does here, mm -hmm. um, simply because you don't want migrants flooding into your country in unlimited numbers. Yes, and the main problem is you cannot combine a welfare state with uh, no borders. It's literally impossible. Exactly. Quite literally. Naomi, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, everyone. That's Naomi Seipt. She's going to be speaking at CPAC a little bit later this week. Thank you for watching, and we shall see you next time.